all know Vivekanand is the pioneer of Dharma and Yoga in the United States. Children of Bal Gokulam, coached by Vandana Ranjan and Pomala Chandran, will take us to his early childhood days, his questioning of the existence of God, and his, to his transformation to a spiritual, yet a down-to-earth being. This has been meticulously put together by the Dew, and this is a piece that no one would like to me, miss. Please enjoy. Swami Vivekananda was one of the most admired and influential spiritual leaders to have ever been born. This world knows him as an inspiring intellectual Hindu monk and Saffron Rose. Indians regard him as one of the forces behind India's independence from British rule. Hindus regard him as a source of deep spiritual power, enlightening energy, and most importantly, open-mindedness. His life is a story each individual should learn in order to understand how to improve one's own life through service, spirituality, and determination. Narendra Nasatta, who was later called Swami Vivekananda, was born on January 12, 1863, to Vishwanathatta and Bhuvaneshwari Devi. He was born in Kolkata during the time when India was under British rule. We are blessed by Lord Shiva with this beautiful baby boy. I am so happy. Let us call him Narendra Nasatta. This is a strong, good name for my first son. <laughs> such a big name for such a small baby. Let us nickname him as Bimle in honor of brave Lord Shiva. Bimle was a very naughty child. He would always see his sister and was constantly getting into trouble. However, even at such a young age, Bimle was very generous. and integrity. Swami Vivekananda 
Vivekananda went on to study at the General Assembly Institution, later called as the Scottish Church College. He was in Professor Hasey's class when he first heard of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa, who later became his guru. William Woodsworth, in his poem, The Excursion, says, But my spirit clings to that poor woman. So familiarly do I perceive her manner, and her look, and presence, and so deeply do I feel her goodness, that not seldom in my walks, a momentary trance comes over me. Sir, what is a trance? A trance is a state of ecstasy or mystic absorption so intense as to cause a temporary loss of consciousness at the earthly level. It is very rare to find people in trance. In fact, the only person I know in today's age who frequently goes into trance is Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa of Dakshinishra. If you want to know the true meaning of trance, I suggest you go meet him. That's a great idea. Let's go meet him. Kali Kali Bolo Prasana Swami Vivekananda got enlightened 
government. He took some naps and became a monk. After Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa's battle with throat cancer, an ultimate death narrated the name of Swami Vivekananda and dedicated his life to God's realization. As a monk, Swami Vivekananda wandered throughout India and came to Maharaj Mongo Singh's court in Alwar, present day Rajasthan. Please have a seat. Swamiji, we are truly honored to have your presence in our court. I'm a person of a broad mindset and don't really believe in all superstitions. Take for example, idol worship. People praying a stone or a piece of wood. That is so meaningless. Son, it is not wood or stone that you're praying to, but what it signifies. Let me illustrate. Divanji, could you please get that photo? Yes, Swamiji. Whose photo is it? It's Amaraj, Mungo Singh's photo. Spit on it. Spit on it? How can I? It's Amaraj. <laughs> Did you see that, son? You're sitting right here, yet your minister can't spit on a mere picture of you. He respects it as if it were you in flesh and blood. Yes, Swamiji, I see what you're trying to imply. You see? It is not possible for the common man to conceive the big idea of God. He needs some aid to comprehend this. Each person sees God differently, depending on what he wants out of life. And so we have various forms of God to help man get closer to realization. And I will help him focus his mind on God. And isn't it true that God resides in everything and everyone? Then is it so wrong to worship an idol? Indeed, Swamiji, you have opened my eyes. Thank you, thank you. But Swamiji, please stay with us for a few more days. No, son. I must travel to the corner of India. I want to understand what is ailing our nation and what I can do to lessen the burden of my people. Okay, Swamiji, so be it. Ananda traveled all over India, seeing the poverty of his people. Namaste. 
स्वामी जी आई एम मुंशी जगमोहन लाल मिनिस्टर टू महाराज अजित सिंह अब खेत्र महाराज है तुम ब्लास्ट टू टू बेबी बॉय नाउ वी मच ऑब्लाइज इफ यू कम टू ब्लास्ट टू बेबी शर्ट लेट्स गो मीट महाराज ऑफ खेत्र Sure, I'll be honored to. 
Swami, you are not only well versed in the Hindu Dharma, but also on Shakespeare, Longfellow, and Tennyson. To ask you for credentials, it's like asking the sun about its right to shine. I will write you a letter of recommendation and introduce you to many influential personalities. Thank, Thank you. you. Here is a man who is more learned than all our learned professors put together. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the afternoon session on the opening day of the World Parliament of Religion on September 11th, 1893. Next, we have Swami Vivekananda from India. Sisters and brothers of America, It fills my heart with joy unspeakable to write in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religion. And I thank you in the name of millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. Oh, to you, brethren. A few lines from a hymn from my earliest boyhood. Different paths which men take to different tendencies, various though they appear, crooked or straight, all lead to thee. Sectarianism, bigotry, and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, have long possessed this beautiful earth. They have filled the earth with violence drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilization, and sent whole nations to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society will be far more advanced than it is now. Do I wish that Christians would become a Hindu? God forbid. Do I wish a Hindu or a Buddhist become Christian? God forbid. Each must assimilate the spirit of the other and yet preserve his individuality and grow according to his own law of growth. If the parliament of religion has shown anything to the world, it is this. It has proven to the world that holiness, purity, and charity are not the exclusive possession of any church in the world. If anybody dreams of exclusive survival, of his own religion and destruction of the other, I pity him and point out that upon the banner of every religion will soon be written, help and not fight, assimilate and not annihilate, harmony and peace, not destruction. Thank you. He instigated a change in a number of people like Rockefeller, Max Mueller, Nikola Tesla, Joseph Campbell, J.D. Salinger, and many more to be charitable. His mesmerizing voice that spoke with authority in impeccable English about his own tradition and the universal truth of the unseen death of all religions moved the people. The saying of great things proved to be true in spite of changing trends. What Swami bestowed a century back for religious harmony and peace is the unfailing truth of yesterday, today, and another century forward. So arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. Oh, man, 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 man.